Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be looking at how to implement k-means algorithm on the Wine dataset. The Wine dataset used for this video is taken from the UCI machine learning repository and is also available on Kaggle. I will post both the links in the description below. Before moving forward, I would highly appreciate if you could take a moment to hit the like button, smash that subscribe button and turn on bell notification so that you don't miss any updates. Stay tuned. Let's now head over to Jupyter Notebook. First, we'll import the required libraries. Let's import pandas and numpy for basic data operation. For plotting the visualizations, let's import matplotlib and cbonds. Let's import style to set the style for our plots. Let's import warnings to remove all the warnings that may appear. Now let's import the k-means library. Let's import sellout score to calculate the sellout score. Now let's import PCA to perform dimensionality reduction. So now let's import the dataset. I'm using the dataset from UCI machine learning repository. Wine data frame equal to pd dot read csv. And to see the data, we can use a head function. When we import the dataset, we can see that the table is not coming properly. This is because we need to specify the separator being used, which in this case is the semicolon. So let's modify the code. And rerun it. Now we can see that the table is in a proper format. Now let's perform some exploratory data analysis on our dataset. To see the shape of our dataset, we can type in dot shape and this will be the shape of a data set. To see more information about the data set, we can use the info method dot info. Now this returns us the column names, the non-null count and the data type of our entries. To check for null values, we can use a is null sum function. Dot sum. This will give us sum of all the null values if they exist. And as we can see, there are no null values in our data. To view the statistical details of a data set, we can use a describe method. Dot describe and as we can see this returns a count, min, max, mean and standard deviation of our entries. Now let's plot a heat map to see the correlation between the columns. Plot dot figure and let's set a figure size. Annotation equal to true to see the correlated values inside the heat map. Let's give a title for this. And we get the heat map. From this we can understand the column alcohol has a high correlation with quality and the column volatile acidity has the lowest correlation with quality. Now let's remove the target column from our data set. Dot drop and the name of the column quality. Let's 
specify the axis from which we want to drop and to see if the column is dropped we can see the column names of our data frame and if you run it we can see that the quality column has been dropped now to find the optimum number of clusters we can use the elbow method and the sellout method let's start with the elbow method for the elbow method what we are going to do is we are running k-means clustering on a data set for a given range of values starting from one cluster and then calculating the sum of square distances for these clusters. Let's initialize an empty array to store the value of the sum of square. I'm initializing WSS where WSS stands for within cluster sum of squares. And let's set a range for i in range 1, 1 to 10. Now we are trying to find the clusters in the range from 1 to 10. So that's why we are setting the range from 1 to 10. K means equal to K means where number of clusters is equal to i and the initialization method is K means plus plus init is used to specify the method of initialization here we are using k means plus plus as it selects the initial number of clusters for k means clustering in a faster way so as to speed up the convergence and let's define a random state 42 let's fit the data fit a data frame and let's open the sum of squares. K-means inertia gives us a sum of squared error score and it is appended to the WSS array. Now let's plot the graph. Plt.plot. Range of values is from 1 to 10. WSS. Let's give a title. Now when we look at the graph, we can see the elbow or the point after which there is no much change in the value of sum of squared error, which in this case is 3. Now if the elbow is not clear or if you are confused with which k value to take, we can use the k elbow visualizer. Let's see how to do that. To use a k elbow visualizer, you need a library called the yellow brick library. If it is not installed, we can just type in pip install yellow brick and it gets installed and in this case it says requirement already satisfied as I have already installed the package now let's import the kelbo visualizer what else key means Kelbo visualizer and give the model name and set the value for k where k is the number of clusters so here it's 1 to 10 and then the timings now let's fit the data to the visualizer and let's plot it So the plot gives a best key value of 3. Now let's find the number of clusters using the sillout method. So first we'll find the sillout score for different clusters in range 2 to 10. The range for sillout method starts from 2, that's why we are initializing 2 to 10. And key means and the number of clusters is equal to 
i and max iteration equal to 100 iterations and let's fit the data dot fit wine data and now let's store the sitout score and let's print the scores So here we get the sellout score for different clusters. So I'm ignoring the first value and taking the next highest value, which in this case is three. Now let's plot a graph for the sellout values. And we'll plot the values range from 2 to 10 and then we need to plot the sellout coefficient let's set the x-axis Let's set the X label. Let's set the Y label. And let's plot. As we can see from the graph, the line starts at 2 and I'm taking the next best value which in this case is 3. So from the above two methods, we have concluded that the optimum number of clusters is 3. So now let's train the k-means model on the data set using 3 clusters. Before that, we need to transform the data using PCA. A PCA is used for dimensionality reduction. So let's initialize PCA x equal to pca dot fit transform our data frame so we are fitting the data now let's initialize the number of clusters for key means number of clusters is 3 and label will be k means dot fit predict and let's get the unique labels numpy dot unique We are getting the unique labels to identify the unique clusters. Now let's visualize the clusters using scatter plot. So far I in unique labels plot dot scatter the data the labels which is equal to I. Let's use plot.legend to see the labels and let's add a title and let's see the plot.
and there you have it. Now if you want to change the number of clusters, you can just change the number of clusters over here. Now this will give you 4 clusters and if you want to change the size of the dots, you can just type in the S parameter, size equal to 20 and that will change the size of the dots. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an understanding of implementing K-means algorithm on a given dataset. Don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.